It's another math day here with teacher Jenny. Join me for another topic. This time we are going to talk about how to solve logarithmic equations. Let us now solve log of 26 to the base 5 equal to log of p to the base 5. So notice that we have the same basis here and on the right side. And notice also we have a single logarithm on the left side and right side. So if this is the case, we are just simply equating this one and that one. So we've got 26 equal to P, or simply P is equal to 26. Okay, next uh, example here is log of 8 minus 20, I uh, minus 2x to the base of 20 equal to log of negative 3x plus 10 to the base of 20. So since we have here the single logarithm on each of the side and we have the same base, so all we have to do is to equate our argument 8 minus 2x, that will be equal to negative 3x plus 10. And then we try to combine like terms. We move negative 3x to the other side and 8 to the other side. So we have negative 2x. So from negative 3x, that will become a plus 3x to the left, to the, to the left side. And that will be equal to 10. And then from positive 8, once we move that to the right side, that becomes minus 8. And then we have here negative 2x plus 3x. That will be equal to x. And that's equal to 10 minus 8. That is 2. So we have our value of x in this example. Next one, we have a single logarithm still on each of the, the sides. And we have the same base. So all we have to do is to equate our argument. We have negative 4x plus 7. That's equal to 2x. And then we move 2x to the other side and 7 to the other side. So negative 4x from 2x, we have minus 2x on that one. That's equal to from plus 7, that will become minus 7 here or negative 7. So we have negative 4x minus 2x. That's negative 6x. That's equal to negative 7. We divide this by negative 6, and so with that 1, our x here is 7 over 6. Our next example here is different from the previous one, in which we have a single logarithm on both sides. So if you try to look at this, we have two terms on the left side here, but a single term, but without logarithm on the right side. So here, what we are going to do is we can move negative 5 to the other side. So we have here log of negative x to the base of 7. That will be equal to negative 3 from negative 5. That will be a plus 5 here. And then we have log of negative x to the base of 7. That will be equal to negative 3 plus 5. That is 2. And then since we have single logarithm on the left side and we don't have logarithm uh, on the other side, all we have to do is to express this one into its exponential form. So we have here the base 7. And then a log is an exponent. So we have a log here, an equal sign, a log is. So we have an exponent of 2. So we have 7 to the power of 2. That will be equal to the argument here is negative x. So we have here 7 to the power of 2, that's the same as 7 times 7, that is 49, and that's equal to negative x. So we divide this by negative 1, and so with this one to make our x positive, so we have 49 is equal, negative 49 is equal to positive x, or x is equal to negative 49. Our next problem here is similar as it is as the example a while ago. So we have here negative 1 plus log of n plus 3 to the base of 6 equal to 0. So we can move 1 to the other side. So we have here log of n plus 3 to the base of 6. That will be equal to 0. So from negative 1 on the left side, that will be a plus 1 here on the right side. And then, what we are going to do here is, we are going to simplify the right side. So we just copy the left side here, and we have that as 1. 
then since we only have single logarithm on the left side but no logarithm on the right side we are to transform this into exponential form so we have here base 6 a log is an exponent so our one here is our exponent and that will be equal to the argument which is n plus 3 so 6 here will be equal to n plus 3 and then we move 3 to the other side so 6 minus 3 that will be equal to n 6 minus 3 is 3 that's equal to n n is equal to 3 so next we have the same sample uh, we have negative 8 plus log of negative 8n that's equal to negative 8 so we move negative 8 to the other side so we have here log of negative 8n that will be equal to negative 8 so from negative 8 on the left side that will be a plus 8 here on the right side and then we have log of negative 8n that will be equal to negative 8 plus 8 that's a 0 and then this is a single logarithm on the left side but no logarithm on the right side so all we have to do is to transform that into exponential now since we cannot see any base at all that is automatically a base 10 and then we have a log is an exponent so our exponent there is 0 and that is equal to negative 8n 10 to the power of 0 or any number raised to the power of 0 that will always be 1 and that is now equal to negative 8n we divide this by negative 8 so that we can solve for our n so we have 1 divided by negative 8 that's negative 1 a and that is equal to n or n is equal to negative 1 a so that is how we get our uh, value of the variable once we have that okay we go to the next example so we have here negative 9 times the log of 2v to the base 11 equal to negative 18 so again we have one logarithm on the left side but we don't have logarithm on the right side so we will be transforming this one later on uh, to exponential form but before that if you try to look at this we have a negative 9 beside our logarithm so that means to say that we need to get that out from there so that we can solve for our variable so we can just do simply divide us by negative 9 and so with this one so we can cancel that one there so we have log of 2v to the base of 11 that will be equal to negative 18 divided by negative 9 that's a positive 2 and then from there we can transform that into exponential form we have 11 as the base a log is an exponent so our 2 is an exponent that will be equal to 2v 11 squared that's 121 that's equal to 2v and then we divide this by 2 so that we can get our value for v so we have v here is equal to 121 over 2 our next example is negative 5 times log of x plus 3 to the base of 5 equal to negative 10 again we are going to divide this by negative 5 so that we can cancel that one out we do the same thing on the left side i mean right side so we have log of x plus 3 to the base of 5 that will be equal to negative 10 divided by negative 5 that's positive 2 so we transform this to exponential we have 5 to the power of 2 that will be equal to x plus 3 so it's okay for us not to write our parenthesis there because we don't we don't have any necessary other number or value that we wanted to separate our x plus 3 with so 5 squared that's 5 times 5 that is 25 equal to x plus 3 we move 3 to the other side so we have 25 minus 3 that will be equal to x 25 minus 3 that is 22 that's equal to x or x is equal to 22 for log of negative m plus 2 equal to 4 some of you might be taking this as our argument is the entire negative m plus 2 but it's not we only have a negative m as our argument the plus 2 there is another term so if but if you have this parenthesis together with that one that would somehow tell you that you have the entire negative m plus 2 as an argument but since it has not then that means to say that 
we take this one as two single or two individual terms. So what we are going to do is to transfer this one out to the other side so that we only have log of negative m and that will be equal to 4 minus 2. Next, we have log of negative m that's equal to 2 and then we convert this into exponential form. We don't have a base visible in here so automatically that is base 10 to the power of 2 equal to negative m. Here we have 10 squared, that's 100, that's equal to negative m. Divide this by negative 1 and so without 1. So our value for uh, m is negative 100. So we have negative 100 equal to m or m is equal to negative 100. Log of x plus log of 8 equal to 2. So on the left side, we have two logarithm. So we have to make it into a single logarithm. So we need to condense this one. Now condensing this, we will be using our product rule because we have a sum of logarithm here with the same base. So we will be using the product rule in which our arguments here will become factors. So we have here log of x times 8 that will be equal to 2 or we can have that as a log of 8x that will be equal to 2. Since we only have one logarithm on the left side we don't have logarithm on the right side so all we have to do is to convert this into into exponential form. So we have base that is not visible that's automatically a 10 and then we have exponent is 2 that's equal to 8x. So 10 to the power of 2 that's 100 that will be equal to 8x, divide us by 8, and so with this one, we have that as 100 over 8 equal to x, or this is now uh, 25 over 2 equal to x, or x is equal to 25 over 2. Next, we have log of x minus log of 2, which is equal to 1. So on the left side, we have two logarithm. We need to condense that one into a single logarithm by simply applying our quotient rule. Because we have a minus here on the logarithms, so quotient rule will be our uh, rule that we will be using. So we have here log of, the first one is x, that will be the numerator, and then the second one is the denominator, which is 2. That will be equal to 1. Since we have single logarithm on the left side, but we don't have a logarithm on the right side, we will be transforming this one into exponential form. We don't have a base here, so that is understood as 10. And then we have an exponent here on the right side, and that will be equal to x over 2. So 10 to the power 1 is 10, that will be equal to x over 2. We do cross multiply, the 10 here is understood with 1 as a denominator, then we cross multiply that one, that will be now x times 1 is x, that's equal to 10 times 2, that's 20. So our x here is 20. We have log of 2 plus log of x equal to 1. Now this one, we've got two logarithm here on the left side, so we condense that one into a single logarithm by applying our product rule. So we have here log of 2 times x, that will be equal to 1. Next, we have a single logarithm on the left side, but we don't have a logarithm on the right side. So all we have to do is to convert this into exponential form. We don't have a base here that is understood as 10 to the power of 1, that will be equal to 2x. Then we have here 10 equal to 2x, divide this by 2, our x here will be 5. So 5 is equal to x or x is equal to 5. Last example, we have ln 15 minus ln of x plus 2 equal to ln of x. So all we have to do is to simply express this one into a single logarithm. So that should be now. Uh, ln, we use quotient rule here because we have a minus. So ln 15 over x plus 2. And then that will be equal to ln x. 
Now, since we have ln here, ln on the right side as well, so we can equate everything or every argument here. So 15 over x plus 2, that will be equal to x. So we can do cross multiplication because we have understood that x is with 1 as a denominator. So we have to cross multiply that one. So we have x times x plus 2, that will be equal to 15. And then x times x, that will be x squared. And then, and then we distribute our x to 2, x times 2, that will be 2x. That's equal to 15. We move 15 to the other side, so that will be now x squared plus 2x minus 15, that's equal to 0. And then we factor out, so x here, uh, while factoring this one, we have negative 15 as our product looking for factors of that one, so that the sum here will be equal to positive 2. Since the sum is positive, our bigger factor should also be positive. So we can have here 15 and negative 1. So 15 plus negative 1, that will be equal to 14. Another factor here is 5 and negative 3. So 5 plus negative 3, that will be equal to positive 2. So there you go with the factor. So we can have x, and then we copy 5, plus 5, because that is positive, times x, negative there, that makes it minus 3 equal to 0. Equate each of the factors to 0, and then solve for x. So our x here is negative 5, while our x here is positive 3. Now we only have to take a positive value of our x for our solution, we cannot have a negative value for a solution. This is our extraneous solution. Because we have an x in here, we cannot have an argument which is a negative 5 that's a no-no because that will create an, an erroneous or an error to our solution. So we only have x equal to 3 as our solution. So that is how we solve our logarithmic equation. So I hope you learned something from me and please practice so that you will be mastering all of the skills.